So this is the absolute cheapest and easiest way to make a vacuum chamber. Now when researching online, do it yourself vacuum chamber, there was tons of videos. A lot of them were great, but you know what? They were super complicated. You had to go to four or five different stores to get all the different materials. You had to solder, you had to do electrical work. You had to take apart old refrigerators and get those pumps. Not only that, you had to buy expensive pumps or other expensive pots and materials to do it. And I said, you know what, there's got to be an easier way. And that's why I decided to make this video. This is unlike any other video I've made because I thought this was so important and so easy to do that is not out there. I spent a total of $48 on these four items. Um, and this is all you will need. So first item, brake bleeder vacuum pump. This is at Harbor Freight. Uh, this was right around $25. And this is basically the pump. It's a hand pump. It even has the gauge and it comes with all the tubing you need. Done deal. How easy is that? Um, I got silicone at, also at Harbor Freight. I think this is like two or three dollars. Just one tube of 100% silicone. Um, okay, I went to Walmart for the next two. I have non-stick baking mat. This is just a silicone sheet, which basically I'm going to cut around to make this uh, airtight. And I guess that brings us to the final thing. This is a fairly large glass cylinder with a top and this was nine dollars. The fifth item that I forgot to mention is weather stripping which can be found basically at any box retail store. So the first thing you're going to do is trace the outside of the lid on the silicone mat and then cut it out. Now you're going to measure the distance between the outer edge of the lid to the little lip on the inner portion of the lid. Once that is measured, try and be as precise as you can and put marks on that distance on the inner side of your silicone mat. Now you're going to cut out the inside of the circle and make sure that it fits snugly around the bottom half of the lid. Now you're going to apply a thick bead of silicone on the bottom side of the lid where the o-ring sits snugly. Press on the o-ring and then put it on top of the glass container making sure that it fits snugly. Then get a sharpie and mark it on the glass container which will be a reference point to putting on the lid every time in the same position. Now open up the brake bleeder package, insert the hose on the pump, and put a small black nozzle on the other end of the hose. Now it's time to drill a hole through the glass lid. Now I'm going to be using a Dremel with a diamond bit and a fine grinding stone. The biggest thing to remember when drilling through glass is to keep it cool. I'm continuously spraying the hole with water as I drill, making sure that the glass does not overheat and crack. If you don't have a Dremel, you can also use a masonry bit to do the same thing. Drill the hole large enough to make sure that the black nozzle from the hose fits snugly and protrudes through the underside of the lid slightly. Now apply a heavy amount of silicone on the top of the lid where the nozzle inserts into the hole. Also, make sure and do the bottom side of the lid where the nozzle sticks out, but be sure not to get silicone in the hole of the nozzle. Now you're gonna cut your weather strip right down the middle so you only have one side of the foam tubing. Now you're gonna stick that tubing around the outer edge of the glass jar. Reinforce the entire thing with hot glue on the inside and outside of the foam barrier.
So for the test, instead of actually doing epoxy, some soapy water that will basically act as resin. Now I'll add a little bit of pressure just to start so then it can get sucked down. And this is such a large container that it's going to take a lot of pumps in order to get the, uh, the air out that I want. There we are at 15 and uh, it is stable, it is staying, we have no leaks. All right, and there's a release valve right here and you'll see the change. See all the bubbles go back down. All right, it's been about 20 minutes now and you see the gauge is still on 20. So it is tight, airtight and sealed um, and we're good to go. I'll go ahead and release this. And there you have it. That's how easy it is. For under $50, you could create your own vacuum chamber, which normal people uh, pay upwards of $200 to $300 on. Or they, you know, take apart refrigerators and spend a week building this thing. This thing, from start to finish, should take no longer than two hours. Um, that is not including the dry time of the silicone. I just did that overnight. Um, that's the best thing to do is just make sure your silicone is completely cured. So just let it dry overnight um, Besides that this is a very quick and easy and effective vacuum chamber. So Give me a comment um, If you like it give a thumbs up hit subscribe and I will see you next time over and out